guys and welcome to the Chroma side of YouTube. I am back and I am happier than ever. I'm in my new studio and I can't wait to talk and tell you guys all about it. Um, first and foremost, I want to do a bunch of new artful things. I want to try my hand at a lot of things and I want to show you what I've been up to. One of my favorite things right now to do is called art journaling. And the reason why art journaling is one of my favorite things is because there's no rules. You can do whatever you want, watercolor, acrylic pouring, acrylic painting, uh, jelly printing, um, sketching, anything goes. And so I thought, you know what? I wanna create my channel. I wanna rebrand it a little bit. It'll still be the same format, obviously, just my hands and my table and me showing you what I'm doing. But I will be doing a lot more than just acrylic pouring. Um, don't get me wrong, I love acrylic pouring. I will always love acrylic pouring. And I will still do acrylic pouring videos on this channel. I just wanted to show you a little more. So let me grab my one of my favorite journals and I will show you what this weird looking setup is for today. Let me go grab that. This is my mixed media Dana Wakely multi-service journal. It is quite large and I love playing on the larger page. So this is one of my pages that I've done. It is a collage page and um, I'm going to get you guys up close to it and show you what I mean by it's a collage page with doodles and drawing. And this is what I'm gonna show you the um, elements, how to make the elements. So if you look closely, you can see there are book pages, there's doodling, there's color, there's prints. There's all types of things going on in the background of this page. And you can see through here, color, shapes, everything. Put you guys. So these, this is the makings of another page that has that. And these are what we call jelly prints. They are colorful pages that we make. And now these are all, of course, ripped to be collaged already. Um, so my favorite pastime, love that one, is to do jelly prints. I love to do them when I'm bored and create beautiful things. Love this color. Looks like a old wall. So I'm going to make some jelly prints today and show you how I do this. Now, the difference between those types of jelly prints and what I'm going to do for you today is this. These are a jelly plate. This is a silicone printing plate. It's like rubber. Um, and you spread your paint out on there and you make what we call prints. But you can also, the fun thing is, you can also image transfer so let's see like here's one of the the Delavine what's her name Cara Delavine I did a uh, image transfer of the medical symbol an eyeball let's see I'm trying to get to my favorite one. Oh, there nope there he is Chris Helmsworth. Now this is an image transfer done with this tool. So I have a bunch of things ready for my jelly plate. I'm going to go through a few things. I always have this, this journal next to me when I'm printing, especially when I'm doing image transfers. Because the bind looks like this, of course I've painted on it and kind of put acrylic paint here. I just wanted to make it a little sturdier. But because it has this type of bind, anywhere you open it in the book, it opens nice and flat. So you can get a nice print when you, you see how, how closed that becomes. 
So this is a great journal to print in. And what I like to do is go back and doodle on the prints, practice my mark making for my art journaling, and uh, doodle, doodle on these prints a little bit. It's a it's very, very great um, thing to do. So what do I like to keep next to me when I print? I like to keep stencils next to me because stencils are always fun to print with. I keep all types of different shapes, sizes, masking stencils, uh, small stencils, big stencils next to me, and they are awesome for printing, as well as stamps. These are my favorite stamps to print with. I bought them off of Wish. They were like a dollar with free shipping. Um, and they are really fun to use. I can't tell you exactly who created them or who made them because like, again, I, I bought them on Wish, which is why I don't mind using acrylic paint on them because they weren't very super expensive. Um, they were like a dollar a piece. Again, these I may not use for my, um, I may not exactly use these particular ones for my jelly plate because I don't want to get paint in the small crevices. Um, these will probably most likely be inking stamps. But these, all day, every day, I, may, I love to make marks with those. So I'm going to put those away to the side. Put these away because I don't know if I'll be using my stencils today. But I like to keep them handy. I like to keep them close. Another thing I keep close is my found objects box. This one, um, this is not necessarily a found objects, but I do have the paper here to show you. This is called a Carabelle Studio Art Printing Texture Plate. If you notice, everything, I don't know if you will notice or not. Let's see if I can get you close. All the letters are backward. So when you squish it down and then you print, the letters are right way. So I love it. This is what the design looks like. I print part portions of it. I'll print the whole thing. Love this. It's a great background tool for jelly printing. I will really, really want some more and um, I put an order in with Santa Claus. <laughs> I have lots of peacock feathers. They make really great impressions. I have little bits of mesh. They make great texture. This is a pot scrubber that I got from Walmart. It makes great designs. Ribbon and lace. They give good texture. This is a pool noodle, and I actually sat in, with an X-Acto blade and carved and made foam stamps. There's one that I need to carve, but I made foam stamps, so that can give you extra texture while printing just random designs. Again, here's another one. I might, do, I might use these two and do a video on carving your own texture stamps. Some more lace. This is a makeup brush cleaner. Love that. Again, here's another one. Love this one because I like the circle. Makeup brush cleaners. Um, screen repair kit that I got from, I don't know, Home Depot or someplace. The screen in it. As well as embroidery. I got these from a thrift store corrugated cardboard. I made these out of foam, foam stamps I made. Good for texture. Another one. I made quite a bit of these. They are really, really great to use. I have, these are combs that you can, oh, let me put this, nope. You can use that. So anytime you find something that is good with 
you know, um, hmm. that is good for impressions or anything like that, get yourself a little box and make a found objects box. Um, love these. These are my, I love these tools here. They are great for mark making in the paint. So, <clears throat> again, I don't know if I'll be using my found objects box today because I am going to be doing transfers. The last item that I will talk about before we get into the transfer technique is the paint. Now, I love my Arteza paints for jelly printing. They are perfect consistency and they just totally rock. I love them. They work very well. Um, I'm extremely happy with the colors that they have sent. The light fastness is not great. They are not light fast at all. But the way I see it, I'm using them in my journals. Um, not a lot of sunlight is going to be hitting them. So there you are. Um, to me, the best buy on their website is the 60, um, the 60 tube box here. As you can see, the, the colors just keep coming. If you don't drop the thing, Amanda, <laughs> they just keep coming. I mean, like you, it's like Christmas in a box. My very last couple of paints that I love to use, <clears throat> I have uh, one, two, three, four, four more brands that I absolutely swear by. Um, the first one being Folk Art Color Shift. You can get them at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, um, I think Michael's. But um, they are really great. They are, because they are a metallic type of paint and they color shift, they go on very transparent on the plate. You can do a really nice glaze and it will pick up that um, excess paint that you have on the plate very well. And therefore your transfers come out gorgeous. Love these. Um, and I can't wait to show you them in action. Uh, this one right here. The uh, System 3 Acrylic Paint by Daler & Rowney. Um, you can buy this at Walmart for, I think it's like a $2 a tube. Love this gold. It go also goes on very transparent, but is very pigmented uh, for when you pull, um, pull, pull your uh, prints. This one here, Folk Art Neon. Again, very transparent. You can do a nice glaze and <clears throat> pull that excess off of your prints. And this one here. Now, I will tell you, I found that I really love this. I don't know how long it's going to be around. There is not a color name on this because it came in a kit from Tuesday morning where you can um, color metal objects to look like worn gold or worn pewter or you know, it gives that uh, worn metal filigree, but I really love it for pulling transfers. So I have these two. One is more gold, one is more bronze, and I use them a lot on my plate. Um, and then also I have the gray one, which is a solid color, and the white one, which is a solid color. These are very opaque, but again, they are good for ghost printing. And I will tell you what ghost printing is here in just a few minutes. And very last but not least, Simply Acrylic Daler & Rowney Matte Medium. I buy this from Walmart. It is very inexpensive, but the best thing is you put it on, it is clear. So if you have a green printed paper and you want to put an orange design on the green paper, instead of making mud and putting like 17 layers of different colors on there, you can use this and get a true orange floating on top of green, and that is why I love this for printing. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about images. Oh, sorry, I know I'm loading a lot, a lot, a lot of um, information on you guys, but I figure you can always go back and rewatch, slow down, or rewind if you are ready 
I have images ready. I pull them out of uh, magazines whenever I see them. And also I have a couple of old textbooks that I bought from the dollar store. Or not the dollar store, the, the um, what do you call it? <laughs> uh, thrift store. So I have all of these images ready to go. Now, when you're picking your images for your printing, it needs to be a high contrast image. Does that mean black and white? No, not necessarily. Does that mean high contrast as in the colors from the background to the foreground? Yes. And of course, black and white images work the best. So let's see how this goes. This is a very, very, very temperamental process, meaning sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but when it works, it is a gift from the art heaven and you just smile and keep going, right? Right. All right, guys, I've picked out my colors. I've put some other darker colors up there. If I change, I will let you see like so. And there you go. Now, I'm gonna walk you through the first one and then I will speed this process up and show you a couple and show you how I do it. Um, this is a brayer. It rolls paint onto your plate. It gives you a nice even thing. This is also a brayer. It's much smaller and I like to use it if I'm doing a small image. I'll only use a portion of the plate. But I'm gonna put that away because I typically love this one. This is my speedball roller. Had it for a while, absolutely love it. Let's get started. Now, however, when you apply your paint to your plate, you will, if your first time doing this, if your, um, if your roller slides, you've applied too much. If your roller glides and spreads the paint out, you've applied just enough. That being said, when you put down this dark, dark color, you see how dark that purple is? You want to be generous with this, this part. What I do is I put my fingers on the sides of the head because I really just care about getting the face on there. If I get the other parts of the body, I'm happy, but if not, then... So, this is very important. I have a page of paper, and I typically use the same one over and over again. Now, again, this is not where I normally print, but it is going to be because it's my new studio. And, um, but anyway, I, I typically have a piece of paper that I use over and over and over again for this. And the reason why I do it this way is because it helps me clean my brayer in between prints, like so. And I get even uh, coverage when I press down. This page is the page from, it's a uh, perfume or a cologne ad from a magazine. I want to say GQ, maybe, but... Anyway, so you see how I am massaging the page down as much as possible. Let's see if it did it. It did. All right, Jake. Look at you. All right. So that's what he looks like with the paint. That. No. Oh, I hope I didn't mess you up. Oh, well. Try not to drop it on there. Now, here's the tricky part. You have to let this dry. And before you put your second layer on there, you just have to let it dry. But what I like to do when I have a big block of color like this, I like to pull out my favorite stamps here and give it just a little texture. So I think I'm going to use this one because I love this one for guys. And it's got like a really great shape to get into these corners here and you see how it removed that paint from the shirt all right 
Jake. You're looking quite cool. And that also kind of helps add to the quality of your print by kind of giving him like a little change. Like it's not exactly from the, from the magazine. You can use this quite a few ways. I have left it on this plastic here and printed with it or I have pulled it off. Um, I have found that I do enjoy pulling them off because then they are really bendable and you can do like this around your finger and just roll it and change it. Do not put a heat gun on your jelly plate. Don't do it. You will ruin your jelly plate. So while I'm waiting for Jakey here to dry, Let's talk about what paper I am printing on. I have this big mammoth pad here. It's huge. I can't even get it all on my desk. I obviously got it on sale for $5.97. It was um, 50 sheets of newspaper print. And what I do is I cut it down to match the size of whatever printing press I am using. This was cut down for a 12 by 12, and I actually cut it to be a little larger than the printing press that I'm using. I have quite a few. They come in many different sizes. This is the um, four by nine. This is, uh, I believe this is like three by, I don't know. I'm, uh, this came in a set. It was a Dana Wakely set. And you can get all three for 30 odd dollars, I think. These are my cut downs for this size plate from the newspaper print. I like the newspaper print because it's easy to rip and it picks up the paint very well. But yet, if you notice, if you take regular copy paper and you lay it on a jelly plate, it sticks right to it. See how this one just lifts right up? Now, when when paint gets put on here, it will um, stick down and pull the paint off. But for right now, just plain jelly plate, it doesn't do that. All right, Jake is now dry. You do want it completely dry in order for it to work. So, I'm going to grab my palette knife. And I usually just do one for this, one little, little scoop, one scoop for this particular plate. Sit that to the side. And if you can see how transparent that went right there, you can still see Jake through that. Now, I feel like I put a little too much which is why I have a piece of paper underneath my jelly plate. That way I can roll off the excess. You don't want too much paint on there or else the paint will not pick up, the paper will not pick up the image that you're trying to transfer. So let's get this page down. Now. This is one of the reasons why I like to have two brayers on hand. I don't want to put paint on the back of my print because who knows, I might print both sides of this paper. It all depends on how the first print gets uh, printed out, but don't waste your paper. If you get a bad print and you don't like it, you could either use it for collage paper just as background or you can print on the other side. So I like to have two brayers, a clean one or a dry one, and the one that I've used to put down the paint with. Massage that in real well. Don't skimp on this. Don't skimp this portion. And we're gonna print pull him off and see how well he transferred. 
I like it. Now, what I'll do is, um, I'm, I'm actually enjoying these faces that don't print all the way. It gives me a great guideline to, to practice my sketching and my shading. So this is not a wasted print to me. I love this print. I could even collage a different face onto this. Who knows? So let's set that aside. And if you notice, I am touching it. That You can't mess these up. I'm going to do one more for you guys. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and speed them up. I'm using Prussian blue for this one. Nice and even. Nice even coating there. Let me find one here. I think I'm going to use this lady and her children and the words. And when I do this, I'm going to print it in my book of transfers. All right, so here's a good example. This one did not work. She was not contrasting enough. Some of the words did come through, but this one did not work. So throw her away. Let's find another one to show. I'm not gonna edit that out because I really want you all to see what does and does not work. Let's try it. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back in with the Prussian blue again because I really want a blue one. <laughs> Put that to the side. Maybe I didn't use enough paint the last time. Maybe I didn't um, rub it down enough. Who knows? Like I said, this is a very temperamental process. my fingers in here so I have a guide as to where to sit it down now I'm gonna be careful with this one and I'm probably not gonna rub this brayer on it because I do want to print this guy as well where is my roller paper so I am going to roll with my brayer on top of this paper here Sometimes the roller paper becomes gorgeous and you use that too. And it gets really great texture because that brayer, when it rolls that paint. I think someone just walked in. So let's pull this print and see how it goes. Much better. Look at that, guys. The robes and the faces are gorgeous. Just flat out gorgeous. So we're going to let this dry. We're going to print. We're going to um, we're gonna pull this print. And then I'm going to do a couple more and speed up the process for you guys. So I'm going to leave this be and let it dry. And I'll be back in just a few minutes um, to show you the pull. Okay, guys. So this is now dry. Let's pull the print. So I used orange. 
I used the orange color shift for the last one, which came out really awesome. Again, with that purple, you don't even get mud with this stuff and it's got a color shift to it so it's a little metallic so it looks very very beautiful but this go round let's do which one do i want to use you know what let's do gold let's do gold with the prussian blue i love prussian blue and gold it's a really great combination and why not so let's roll that out See what I mean by how pigmented that gold is? So the trick to this is your color, your top color, you should be able to see through it and, and decipher what is on the plate when you roll this out. And you can feel when the paint gets a little tacky. Um, I was gonna do my book on this one. So let's open it up to the page I want. Yes. And I think I'm gonna print this entire page, this whole thing on a page. No, I take it back. I'm gonna do it this way. So, put that down, push it. I'm sorry if you guys see my head. I'm not 100% sure where my camera angle is. The thing I like about doing it in the book is you get even pressure when you push down on the book because the cover is hard. So now, let's pull it back, hold down the plate, and you have a great transfer image. Even the words down here got transferred. And that gold is popping. So what I'll do is I'll turn to a page in the book, like right here, and I'll print what's left off the off the plate. <clears throat> and that's okay because it'll give me a background. I can do something with something in the back.
Okay guys, so <clears throat> I have done multiple prints for you today. They are uh, transfer prints. I wanted to close this video out with how I store my jelly plates, which is in this nifty little jelly printing, jelly plate um, tin that you can also purchase from Ranger Inc. Um, dot com. All three of these, again, are a Dana Wakely set. They, um, they come and you can also purchase the tin from the same place, rangerinc.com. And you can, uh, have this nifty little storage set so you don't have to worry about your plates drying out. Oh, this is the brand. I will bring it close to you so you can see. This is the brand of jelly plate that I am using today. This is the storage tin that is marketed for that particular set. You can also, I think you can fit an eight by 10 in this, um, the larger one that she has. But let's go through and see what all we have gotten accomplished in about an hour. Honestly, we've played in, in this uh, for about an hour. So, we have this print here. These are prints that didn't really go very well. This one kind of did. It's a house, and you can kind of see that. But honestly, it's really great movement of color. So, I could actually, this is a wonderful start of an art journal page or even just collage paper. I intend to use this um, when I get done printing in it. I intend to use this as a collage collective. So whenever I need certain colors, whenever I need a face, eyes, whatever have you, they are different looking and I have them at the ready. I can just rip right out of this book. So um, I have another one of these at the house and I will be more than happy to fill it with transfers. Awesome idea. Again, if you're gonna use a journal for printing, one with a bind like this that doesn't really have anything hard on there, you can see the bind is perfect for printing. So we have this guy right here, American Gothic, I believe it's called. We have both Edward Norton prints. This is the original print that I did and this was the ghost print because I noticed there was just enough on the page to take a ghost print. We have this guy here with the beautiful eyes. And we have Jake Gyllenhaal with a really designed shirt that we gave him. So again, we've had some fails on this video which I am going to leave in because that's how you learn. But honestly, I'm happy with these. I've got a decent pair of eyes out of this. I've got a gorgeous men's shape of a face. So even if I wanted to just put a face in one of my journals, but I don't know where to start, I could take this, cut it out, glue it into my journal, and then sketch a face, and I have a, a general idea of what I want. Edward Norton, I mean, that was just a contrasting photo that I found it I really liked and I'm really happy with this print um, again you can use more than one color to create your print and a ghost print essentially all of these things are ghost prints a ghost print is when you let paint dry on your plate and you pull it off with a very thin layer of a lighter color in order to see what's underneath so essentially all of these are technically ghost prints. So for my next video with the printing press, which I have no idea when it's gonna be, I will show you how to use your found objects with your jelly plate and how to create some really awesome prints like what I showed you that I like to collage with. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and if you have any suggestions or questions, please, Comment in the comment section below. It always helps me out. Please shoot me a like for this video. Um, and I have now become a Ranger affiliate. So in my art studio, I will be able to sell um, supplies by rangerinc.com. And I am super excited about that. I am wondering if it would benefit me, if you think it would, 
that I become an affiliate with an affiliate code to put under my videos? Would that benefit me um, by showing you where to buy the products and giving you a code to use for a discount off of your products? Um, please let me know if that's something that you all are interested in. I would love to figure out how to do it. I know a lot of crafting YouTubers and art YouTubers do this. Um, but like I said, I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm trying to grow my channel and I'm trying to grow a business. And I can't wait to start this beautiful journey with you all. My studio is not 100% done. I just, I was chomping at the bit to do a video and I needed to see you guys again. I needed to show you I'm still here. I'm still creating and I'm still learning just as well as you all are. Um, if you want to see another video with my gel press, please give me a thumbs up. Please let me know what you're thinking. Um, if there's anything else you want to see me try, please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. Um... Until next time, and as always, be inspired. Bye-bye, y'all.